No. Get that. Okay. Okay. So many of you may have been wondering, who is Richard Stone? <laughs> well, he's kind of, um, he's kind of the savior of the free software world. So he's the president of the Free Software Foundation ever since 1985, and also the founder of uh, the Kindle Project, which is uh, he started writing software for it in 1983, and it officially became a thing in. Uh, 1985. So, what has um, Richard Stallman written? What software has he contributed to the free software? So, the GNU compiler collection, so GCC, GNU Bugger, GDB, Emacs, which is terrible, we all know who knows better. See, the I think part, Lucas isn't here. The best part about Emacs, though, is that it was originally written for Echo Macros. Have you seen that language? No. It's uh, actually, actually also, you to go for only six hours. Richard also started the GNU project uh, with the idea of starting his own operating system, which he didn't get to because he didn't write his own kernel, yeah. which we'll get into more later. Uh, he also developed the GNU General Public License, which is a copy left. Um, document. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically what it allows you to do is say I'm going to develop this, soft, this free software, um, free as in freedom, and I'm going to release it to anyone that wants to use it, but they can't just copy it to themselves. So I'm, um, I'm a commercial entity and I want to use a open source project that's licensed under the GPL license then I have to release the source code um, and any modifications I make to that project. Yes, this is a dumb question. What does GNU stand for? GNU <coughs> is equals, oh. GNU is not Unix, so it's a recursive, okay, wait, we're, we're going to get into a B-tree argument here, <laughs> to say, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <coughs> um, like I said, we started writing the software in 1983, and in 1985, I believe, Linus started using uh, the GNU software, so the compiler, debugger, and whatnot to help make the Linux kernel. And we have a nice Spider-Man meme here. All right, this is, so this is Richard Stallman here. This is a cardboard cutout, and this is Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, and they're selling um, counterfeit <laughs> windows <laughs> in somewhere in Asia. So it just shows how much they support open source software. <laughs> the other thing is that a beginner shouldn't be installing operating systems. Go to a user group and find someone who loves installing the system to help people. Uh, I've never installed Unix slash Linux. I never saw a point in learning how. There was always someone I could ask to do it for me who already knew how and who wouldn't make any mistakes. So I, that is Richard Summers' take on installing Linux. He is, he's never installed Linux in his life, he claims. Um, which is interesting. And that's where our club steps in, the Linux user group here Woo. with Unix. Um, so we have our install fest. Once this semester, um, we will help new users <coughs> install Linux and other derivatives of Unix for PSD. We just won't make Hackintoshes. Correct. I mean, like it would fall within the scope of our group. It would just be a little. I would send them to the Windows users. So <laughs> <laughs> why? Hackintoshes. So. Um, Open barrel. Richard Stallman, as he says himself, is known as RMS. So that's his online handle. Um, and part of the Free Software Foundation, they uh, do a lot of advocating, of course, of, of free and open source software. So the great Richard Stallman that he is made uh, a song to help spread free software. 
And so we'll go over the lyrics real quick so you can all sing along and remember. So, so is it anything like all the uh, BSD songs that they released with NetBSD? I have not seen the BSD songs. They're, they're much better. They are. They're, they're okay. beautiful. I'll take your word for that. Uh, I've only listened to this. That's pretty terrible. But can you see it, folks? No, I'm not seeing it. You guys have to, we're going to remember it real quick and then we're going to sing along with it. All right. So, free software song. Um, just now, share our software, you'll be free. Hackers, you'll be free. And then he goes into the. Do you have the video from singing? Yeah, that's right here. Paolo, ritmo de siete compases. No sé si les parece un poco confuso. Un poco confuso. No es un error. Por ejemplo, es el ritmo. That's the beat, okay? It's a seven to five beat. That's the ritmo. Join us now and share the software. You'll be free, hackers. You'll be free. Join us now and share the software. You'll be free, hackers. You'll be free. Hoarders can get piles of money. That is true, hackers. That is true. But they cannot help their neighbors. That's not good, hackers. That's not good. When we have. <laughs> so, so I just pulled it up on YouTube, and apparently there's a um, uh, kind of rock looking band that does it too. Oh, wow. He, he, he sang it. He sang it a couple times. It's been recorded. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but so you may have you may have noticed that Richard Stallman does not refer to Linux uh, by itself because Linux to him is just a small part of that operating system. So he refers to uh, what we know as the Linux operating system as GNU plus Linux or GNU slash Linux, as he's previously called it. And there's this copy pasta that has gone around the internet many, many times. Um, <laughs> this is too long. Okay. Yeah, but basically, Linux is, or the kernel is only a small part of the machine. Um, because dealing with hardware is really easy. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, no, we're not over yet. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have, all right, we're going to go over some of Stallman's lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how responsive this website is? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, really? Wait, no, it is. When, oh. when you have the... All right, is that big enough for everyone? I think you can do less than that. Oh, uh, we only have a little smaller. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. So, since he doesn't have a um, favorite of much, he does wear a lot of red shirts, though. So, in memory of RMS, I wore a red Room shirt. Yeah, it's uh, passage for red. And he also uh, is not a big fan of logos and whatnot, so I'm not wearing any branding whatsoever in my outfit. What brand of jeans are those? I can't, I don't know. RMS. Fire mess jeans, there you go. Um, apparently he lived in his office at MIT for a while. I don't know how that worked. Probably smelled pretty bad. Yeah. I, is it a myth that he has never showered since, like, I think that was? I doubt it doesn't. Okay. I've heard they, like, spray his skin with something so he doesn't have to, but I still, <laughs> I still say that's ridiculous. Yeah, and I've heard that Kim Jong-un shit's gold. Um, Kim <laughs> I'm not going to go through his music. He's a lot of stuff in there. Um, okay. He says to support Bernie Sanders for president of the U.S. on his website. Yeah, there's really? a lot wrong with you. He is very politically motivated on his yeah. personal side. But it is his personal side, so I guess he's correct to do that. What's yeah. a simian? I have no idea. I refuse to eat most intelligent animals such as. Oh yes, and guys, uh, it's grab math season, in case you're wondering. Display how Stallman does his computing. 
Oh, that's the best. Um, yeah, we're yeah, we're in the next. Okay. So okay, he doesn't like tuna. We'll go. Okay. We also, as you see today, I brought um, off-brand Coca-Cola. Now it was against my will to go buy me brand cola from Coca-Cola because he is a, a total boycott of the company. Um, as you can see here, we usually murder union organizers in Colombia and Guatemala, so he only drinks Pepsi. That is his. And this is my one great thing. He doesn't eat breakfast. You gotta eat breakfast. No, you don't. He doesn't eat breakfast. Yeah. You have to eat breakfast. For the canes. Okay, we're not gonna go to religion. Okay, close it. Here we go. Maybe my shirts are red or purple. I like these colors. <laughs> None of my shirts carry messages. Except for I think he's a may have a free software foundation shirt. Um yeah. So. Oh, okay. And he also doesn't like wearing ties. He believes it's a symbol of um, like giving in to your superiors and <laughs> or just like sucking up to someone. So he doesn't like that. Um, you can do the ball cap and there. Okay. He refuses to use um, rewards cards at grocery stores because they track you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So and he also does not use a Later. Credit cards, he doesn't like to do it, tries to do everything in cash. He will pay, he will use a credit card if something already requires his ID, so he, he knows his, um, it's not going to be anonymous anymore, so he'll just do it anyways. Cellular phones, of course they track you, everyone in here should know that. <laughs> Please turn off your personal tracking devices now. Yes. Um, and they also have a lot of non-free software. Um, many backdoors and whatnot. I have not seen this holiday one. I mostly, what is crab mass? I don't even know. It's a holiday. Well, what is it? It's a hyperlink. Click on the link. It's a hyperlink. Yeah. <laughs> Middle click on it. No. I digress. So, what? Crab mass. Crab mass. Nice. It's, it's, it's the first thing. Oh, it's the first Oh. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Nope, I did it. I just quoted Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Control W, I did Control Q. Trains. I like trains. He likes trains. I like turtles. He likes trains. As you saw in this video, he spoke Spanish. I believe. And I don't know what else. He says French here. I guess French and Spanish. He always carries his computer and a book. I see. Actually, we're going to. One another tangent here. I recommend sending your <coughs> homepage to rms.sexy. It is a vast oh. assortment of <coughs> Richard Stallman pictures for yeah. your enjoyment. And many of these you'll see he is like out in the wilderness with his laptop, which it makes <laughs> no sense to me. <laughs> this picture is just. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a picture of Richard Stallman. Um, but yeah, like, like enjoy, enjoy nature. I don't know why he has a computer. Um, but he always carries a book and all that. So I encourage you to set the size of your front page. It'll give you a good laugh every time you're in the browser. Looks like he has like a shoulder strap on his laptop too. What? I don't know what's surprising. Okay, so how he does his computing. He has some very, um, what some might say extreme measures that he uses when using a computer. For example, he does not browse the internet. He will send an email to 
uh, special server he has set up, which will download the web page and email back to him, and then he'll view that in Emacs or Lynx, which is a, a uh, command line browser if it has too much HTML nonsense. Um, he uses the ThinkPad, ThinkPad X60, which has a free uh, bootloader on it, so um, to make sure there's less backdoors. And right now, so most computers, of course, have a ton of um, non-free software on them. So even though like this computer he's using has a open source BIOS on it, like the hard drive firmware, the network interface firmware. He probably doesn't even have a webcam, but other little small parts in there, they're going to have non-free software. So you, it, it's a, almost impossible right now to find a laptop that is has absolutely no non-free software on it. Uh, he doesn't have a preferred uh, GNU plus Linux distro. I guess it's just whatever um, whoever's installing his Linux chooses because <laughs> he doesn't install it. Um, uses the command line a lot. Says for convenience sake. Says he spends a lot of time in Emacs. So I've never used Emacs, but I know <laughs> it has many, many, many. Um, I guess plugins. There's now, I think, a window manager built in the Emacs store is a, you can get as a plugin. So it's very close to almost being its own operating system. Emacs D. Emacs D. Actually, I did earlier when I said the original um, plan of the GNU Foundation or project was to create their own operating system. They did make the uh, microkernel with Carnegie Mellon, I believe, which is now known as um, Perl. You know, heard, um, but that's not extremely popular. Well, I mean, it's based on Mach, which was Carnegie Mellon. Okay. I think that's the detail. Okay, thank you. Um, Mach is also for um, the Darwin kernel. <coughs> it is, which yeah. is what Mac is. Based yeah. On. How is that really to BSD then? Uh, Mach is technically a BSD derivative, technically. Okay. Well. Um, okay, here we go. Um, the internet is also very against non free JavaScript code um, in browsers. So there's a lot of web applications these days that are very heavily executed in your, completely in your browser. I mean like for, for me I had um, a popular email site using over a quarter gig of RAM per tab um, and I had like three email accounts open at the same time so I was like why don't I just go use my free software local application and it will use under 100 megabytes or something. So um, you also get into things like um, you can replace the JavaScript or completely take it away from you without warning or maliciously change it and a backdoor. Um, so this is how he, like I said, he goes on the internet. He sends mail to his program, fetches them, mails it back to him. Never pays for anything like that. We're like halfway through this. <coughs> hey, Lisp is paid for programming language. Oh, Lisp. Okay. It's uh, not Lisp and C. Grass is two. Maybe Java frames are all missing in Python. He's never used Java. I'm pretty sure that's false. We should we should teach him Java. 
Well, there was something about how he <coughs> one time did program in Java. Uh, oh no, there was the. It says I, I, that I've never used it. Uh, he probably. It used to be more to ironic. He just said, I have written code in Java before, but I didn't see what was the hype about it. But yeah. here he clarified it. It's boring. And this is probably the biggest thing you gotta take away. He refuses to install non free software or tolerates the installed presence on his computer. Does need special exceptions for where he's um, somewhere where the only computers available are ones that contain non free software. He also is against uh, digital restriction mechanisms. So, um, like you go buy a DVD, the DVD is actually encrypted, and so you can't just copy the video file on your computer um, very easily. You can, you can if you have the decryption key, you can get it all. But um, there's other online services that use that to prevent um, mass copying of copyrighted data. <laughs> And he doesn't like copyrighted stuff, so uh, he's against that. He's against Netflix and chill guys. Took <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, It's a fan of DuckDuckGo. They are a search engine that respects your privacy. They claim to keep no logs, and they will not tailor the search results to you. So everyone, no matter what you're searching, gets the same results. Um, and also, it says it works with JavaScript too. Uh, it's also against social networking sites, like Facebook, because you are the product, and they're making money off your privacy, as are many other uh, internet companies. But, but what about GNU Social and all these other free? I need to know about GNU Social. <laughs> really? <laughs> Middle it's Twitter. Right there. Oh. Where is it? It, it's Twitter. It's, Twitter. it's basically it's Twitter, but not. Sorry. It's free Twitter. <clears throat> well, it never gets big enough. We'll see if he pays for those. I need to know. Should we go to slash G right now? Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> just go to slash G. There's going to be something about Stallman. Just, just go, to, uh, go to slash G. Go to the stack com, right? Or it's org. Go to the catalog. Or it's, no, we're just going to slash G. Yeah, slash G slash catalog. Go to the catalog so you can search for the Stallman. No, it should be pinned on the top still, right? That's just a sticky. There's some comments on Yeah. There. We don't need that. OK. <laughs> so of course, any of you that have gone to uh, Slash G and 4chan have seen <laughs> the infamous um, install Gen2 um, put up here. I'm guessing this is not Richard Stallman <laughs> who put it up. But nonetheless, um, it's another good meme. Just search for Stallman. No, we're done. We're, we're off 4chan now. Wow. <laughs> That's so rude. <laughs> All the kids are Stallman. Okay. Um, Done with his personal computing habits. We're gonna go. Here's some. We're gonna go through some of his quotes now. Now this is a funny one. Um, let's see here. Like I said, he does a lot of political stuff on his site. Say, if heart attacks and strokes kill 100,000 people a year in the UK, and 10 percent of those deaths can be prevented by eating better. That's 15,000 lives saved per year. And uh, you're seeing how governments are focusing more on terrorism, which have less deaths. 
they're refusing to address the war on fat. Where do we? It would be bad for business. Ocean Obama, deep waves. Thanks, Obama. Um, also, are these good quotes? We want these. Hmm. I'm a pessimist by na nature. Many people can only keep on fighting when they expect to win. I'm not like that. I always expect to lose. I fight anyways, and sometimes I win. So I guess that's why he does what he does. His travel accommodations. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, should we go to the full thing or just the highlights? Yeah, the full thing. The full thing. Very cool. Um, this is yeah, this is great. This is so. If you want to host um, RMS for a talk, you need to comply with all this. Kind of thing. I guess not. Okay. Um, so you need to go through. specific about many things. So those are speech titles or what he'll talk about. Talk mainly about the free software and whatnot. He gave the copyright on the tech. Okay. I have a break in the middle of my speech. Once I start, I will go straight through. This is another big one. If you're inviting him to a talk with other speakers, you have to approve it with him, or else he uh, is not happy with that. He could be promoting something that is against his ethics. He wants to prevent that. Here's another one. What he drinks. So he likes to drink tea with milk and sugar. But if he has um, his favorite tea, which he carries on him at all times, he says he will not eat his milk or sugar. Um, and this is where we go back to the Coca-Cola boycott he has. If he needs caffeine, he would like two small cans or small bottles of non-diet Pepsi. Um, and that quote I, I was going over earlier against sugar and salt um, around the world. He, he does have this consciousness for trying not to drink too much sugar. Um, there again, English, French, and Spanish. It's also against sponsors um, that will force him to do an advertisement during speech. He will thank them briefly um, if he feels like he, he wants to, but he will not um, say anything or endorse them um, just to get sponsorship. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Please don't use a penguin as a symbol for my work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Uh, the best is like his accommodations. Okay. He 
will take submissions for the Free Software Foundation and just the Advance, which is pretty cool. The fact is, I have no vacations. Don't feel sorry for me. Idleness is not something I wish for. I spend six to eight hours every day doing my usual work, which is responding to email about the new software project and new software for me. Uh, work comes in every day. Oh, shit, I was going to email him before this. Say if any of you words he wanted to tell us. <laughs> we, to, we, we should try to get him back here. Although I think other members of Vlog have said he refuses to come back to Blacksburg. Maybe we should go to like Radford and see if we'll go there. Hey, you've never been to Radford. It's uh, okay. not Blacksburg. It's not Blacksburg. No, it's not. Um, come on, where are the accommodations? This is the funniest part. Oh, okay, here's another thing. Uh, recording a speech. He does not approve of recording his speeches in a non-free format. So if you record it or stream it live, he uh, pretty much requires that you do that in, or very, very much urges you to do that in um, WebM, uh, or this, um, any of these open source codecs. Which is which is pretty cool because a lot of um, like for streaming, I, I don't think a huge amount of companies will do that um, primarily. But he's kind of he's forcing people to um, adapt, adopt these uh, open source offerings. <coughs> so here we are again. All the all the videos I've been showing you today have been downloaded in uh, the WebM format, which is open source. Says viewing my speech in a non free format will require people to do the exact opposite of what I asked them to do. The medium's message would contradict my message. It's very He doesn't like to take business class, first class here. This is economy is just fine. Um, this is the extra price of business ticket would be better spent somewhere else. Accommodations, here we are. Oh, no, so he, uh, he probably doesn't fly, wait, no. Don't, don't fly, but they make you, he makes you pay for it. No, yeah. but well, he says he doesn't use trains with the ID policy. Yeah. Flying. If, you're if he's taking the train, he demands that, uh, or bus, he demands that you don't give them his name. If you're flying, your ID is as fuck, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean. Well, I think we wouldn't say. He's uh, kind of said that if he has to be identified, he has to be identified. And then he'll pay with credit card just to make it obvious. He doesn't have DJ Kielet money to drive okay. himself to everywhere. Another one. Another. Drive himself to the Bahamas. He doesn't. How did he get to the Bahamas? Wait, Richard Stallman got to the Bahamas? That's a question. I mean, you realize. Well, he's a boat, right? Right? No, he, says, he's a boat. he says, like, he'll buy, he'll buy personal plane tickets, I believe. Like, he says, with his, like, once he buys something, although he says he doesn't use any, he doesn't buy anything online. But he's, if he's paying something with his credit card, he knows his ID is already compromised. Or no, if he's, he has to use his ID for something, then he will pay with his credit card. Because okay. his ID is there. Um, all right, so this is this is the, the good part right here. Accommodations. He will not stay in a hotel. He doesn't want to. He'd rather sleep on a friend's sofa. Um, I 
didn't know that. Many countries have a law that hotels must report all guests to the police. So I guess he doesn't want to get arrested. Um, okay. He can only sleep between temperatures of. <laughs> I just think he same, can sleep same. up to <laughs> 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Same. But if it's dry, he can stay at 22 degrees centigrade. Um, <laughs> More than three degrees above that temperature, I need air conditioning to sleep. <laughs> and then he goes on to, um, um, if he is in a hotel, you have to verify that the hotel has working air conditioning and it will be functional during the day that he's staying at. So some uh, hotels will turn off the air conditioning for different seasons or whatnot, and even if there's a heat wave. So he insists that that you make sure the air conditioning works. Uh, pets, he's allergic to cats, so the room he's sleeping in, he would like to be cat free, but he says he might even enjoy the cat uh, if it's in another area of the house. So um, I guess he's a cat person. He, do, he does, he's okay with dogs if they don't jump up on him, um, or he doesn't mind if they briefly do it when he walks in, I believe, or if the owner holds the dog back. He's fond of parrots. Oh yeah, he loves parrots, but do not buy him a parrot, okay? <laughs> he says the parrot will probably outlive you, and um, you'll make it depressed, and the parrot that you just bought him was probably captured from the wild and already um, unhappy, so he would not like to emotionally scar uh, parrots. How long do parrots live though? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 20, 20, 20 years. <clears throat> That is what? 95 years? <coughs> what? No, I think that's five. true. I think there's records of 95 years. Yeah, 60 maybe. years. There's See, turtles that old. Like in Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I think I've seen that on Animal Planet. Wait, there's two. What are the. Um, okay, because one of my servers is named Crush after the, like, the dad. And the son, his name is Squirt, and I wasn't going to name a server tag. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't buy him a pair. We should do that if he comes to Well, it will be like a joke. Be like, hey. We'll take him to a frosty pair. Yeah. <laughs> For dinner. Sugar. Okay. Um, I guess that's the end of that. This is the okay. Um, we watched a couple of these. Do you guys want to watch? We don't want to watch this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> and this is the copy pasta right aloud. We don't want to watch that. Um, there is one more video here. This is like 15 ish minutes. Do you guys want to watch it? It's a TED talk. Let's just watch it. Kind of summarizes everything I did. Wait, is this an official TED talk of his? Yeah, this is a TED talk. Is it a TED? Top or a TEDx talk? Uh, TEDx. It's a short one. 15. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Everything I missed is... Free software is the first battle in the liberation of cyberspace. Who controls your computer? Is it you? This is better. Or is it some big company that's really controlling it? Well, what is a computer? A computer is a universal machine. It will do any computation you want it to because you give it a program that says what the computation is that you want. So the computer only knows how to get out an instruction and do it and get out another instruction and do it. The program has the instructions. It says what to do. <clears throat> so you, by writing the right program, you can make it do anything. Well, almost anything. <clears throat> so who gives the instructions to your computer? You might think it's obeying your instructions when really it's obeying somebody else first and you only as much as that company wants it to will let it listen to you. With software, there are two possibilities. Either the users control the program, or the program controls the users. It's inevitably one or the other. So in order for the users to control the program, they need the four essential freedoms. 
And that's the definition of free software. Free software respects the user's freedom and community. Now, we often call it Libra, using a French or Spanish word, pronounce it as you like. The point is, that's what we mean. We don't mean it's gratis. We're not talking about price. We're concerned with your freedom. And we sometimes say free slash Libra to show that. So freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish for whatever purpose. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code of the program and change it so it does the computing you want it to do. But what is the source code? Well, every program typically will have two forms. There's the form that you can read and you can understand if you know the programming language. That's the source. That's what programmers write and change. Then there's the executable, which is a bunch of numbers which even a programmer can't figure out. If all you get is the executable, it's a horrible pain in the neck to figure out what it does, and even harder to change it. So to give you the real possibility to study and change it, they've got to give you the source code. That's a requirement. Well, with those two freedoms, each user separately can make a copy and start changing it and make it do what she wants. That's individual control. But what if you're not a programmer? You look at the source code and you don't understand it. Individual control isn't enough. We also need collective control, which means any group of users are free to work together to adapt the program to what they want. Of course, in the group, some of them are programmers. They're the ones who actually write the changes, but they're doing it as part of the group for what the group wants. Of course, the group doesn't have to be everybody. So others can use it some other way. They're all free to do that. So collective control requires two more essential freedoms. Freedom two is the freedom to redistribute exact copies, to make the copies and then give them away or sell them when you wish. And freedom three is similar, but it's for your modified versions. You're free to make copies and then give them or sell them when you wish. So if you do have these freedoms, then it's free software that users control the program. But if any of those freedoms is missing, then the users don't control the program. Instead, the program controls the users. And the developer controls the program. So that means this program is an instrument of unjust power for its developer over the users. That means the users don't have freedom. That's non-free proprietary software, which we've got to get rid of. Well, when you've got proprietary software, what happens? Sometimes the program snoops on the user. Sometimes it tracks the user. Sometimes it restricts the user. It stops users from doing what they want to do. You can see that the blue ray is your enemy. Um, sometimes the software remotely deletes books, as Amazon did with 1984. Uh, sometimes the developer compels users to install a harmful upgrade by threatening to take away other functionality if it's not installed, as Sony did. And sometimes they can even forcibly change the software at a distance, as Microsoft can with Windows through the universal back door. Um, so sometimes they even sabotage users, as Microsoft does when it tells the NSA about bugs in Windows so it can use them to attack people's computers. Well, what you get is basically with proprietary software, the owner has power over the users and takes advantage of this power, putting in those various malicious functionalities to hurt the users. Of course, they don't do this because they're sadists. They're doing it just for money, for greed. They have various ways that they can profit from having this power over users, which does not make it even the tiniest bit less evil. But they have no shame about it. They have conferences where they talk about the latest ways they can take advantage of users through the power they have. Uh, basically, proprietary software which in, is now for almost all the users of proprietary software, they're using proprietary malware. It's software for suckers. So how do, you, how do you stop being a victim? Formally, 
You have to stop using computers, but not anymore. Now you can come join us in the free world that we've built. Uh, in 1983, <laughs> I announced that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's how much of a contribution GNU uh, has contributed to the Nucleus Linux operating system, as according to Richard Stock. Um, I said Richard wrote the uh, like GCC, GDB, um, to the Max. Yeah, but but the rest of the GNU project has covered um, like core utils, so like your LS, your grep. Um, all the other funky commands, balk. Uh, previously D date. What? Previously D date. Until someone decided it wasn't worth keeping. So, yeah. Um, so, a lot of the user space uh, core util programs are written by GNU, and obviously the kernel is that by Linux. We would develop a completely free software operating system called GNU. In 1992, we had it almost finished. But one piece was missing, the kernel. Linus Torvalds in that year freed his kernel Linux, which filled the last gap and gave us the first complete system you could run on a PC, GNU plus Linux. So unfortunately, having freedom at one more point doesn't guarantee you'll keep it. There are over a thousand different variants of GNU slash Linux. They're called distributions. A few of them are entirely free software. Most of them have non-free software added because they're maintained by people who aren't concerned about freedom. They'd rather add convenience but at the cost of freedom. So you have to check which is a free distro. To keep your freedom sometimes requires a sacrifice, sometimes a big sacrifice, as at Lexington. Sometimes, but, but in our campaign, they tend to be little sacrifices. Anybody with a little bit of maturity can make these sacrifices. For instance, you want applications, but some of them are not free. If you want freedom, you've got to do without them. So there may be some inconveniences you have to suffer for your freedom's sake. <laughs> then many websites send non-free programs written in JavaScript to the user's browser. If you don't want to run non-free programs, you should install LibreJS, which blocks, keeps out non-free JavaScript. Links you and sometimes chat. servers will offer to do your computing. They say, send us all your data, obviously for suckers. Then the server does the computing and sends you back the results. But you're not supposed to think about what's happening because it's a cloud and you don't see what's going on. Well, you should look. It's software as a service as a software substitute, and it takes away control of your computing. So, a large fraction of the world's web servers are running GNU slash Linux and other free software. But I think the most important computers to put freedom in are your computers, not companies' web servers. They deserve freedom also. But above all, it's people that deserve freedom. So. Uh, we need to advance, and to do that, we have to cross obstacles. One of them is there are big companies that make a lot of money by having control over users, and they don't want to let us advance. We have to overcome their opposition. Another is that the ma mainstream media don't talk about free software. They have a term that they use to bury these ethical issues. They say open source instead. Now. It talks about more or less the same programs, but with different ideas, where free software activists say, this is a matter of right and wrong. Users deserve freedom. We demand freedom. The people who say open source, they don't want to say that. So instead they say, let the users change the software and redistribute it, and they'll make the code better. So who here would consider themselves a free software activist? No. You guys are all open source boosters. Wow. There are there are companies. There, there's arguments when companies open source some of their software. Are they doing it just because they don't feel like supporting it themselves anymore, or are they truly trying to help their community? I mean, so, open is better than nothing. Yeah, it's confusing to call it free because it makes it sound like it's free as in money. So it makes more sense to say open source. So that's why we say libre. Okay. And then you have the GPL versus the BSD license. Which and the many would say is really free. Yeah. Um, 
the do what the fuck you want license. They'll fix some bugs. It may be true, but it's a less important issue. If we want to keep our freedom, we've got to talk about freedom. So say free software and you're helping us every time. Another obstacle is that lots of schools teach non-free software, which is basically like teaching the kids to smoke tobacco. It's implanting <laughs> dependence, which is the opposite of what schools should do. A, a school should prepare citizens to live in a strong, capable, independent, cooperating, and free society, which means teaching free software in a school. But there's another reason to do that for education. Some kids want to become programmers. They're curious. They want to know how the programs work. Well, the one who's studying a free software can understand it. The one who's studying a non-free program can't learn anything because the knowledge in the non-free program is withheld, denied to the students. So to uphold the spirit of education, the school should make sure its programs are free. But there's an even more important reason. Schools should teach the spirit of goodwill, the habit of helping other people. So the class should say, if you bring a program to class, just as if you bring cookies to class, you've got to share it with everyone else. Can't keep it to yourself. You've got to share the source code so other people can learn. So don't bring any proprietary software to this class. The school has to set a good example by following its own rule. It should bring only free software to class, except as a reverse engineering exercise. <laughs> Another obstacle is there's hardware we don't know how to write free software for because they won't tell us how to use the hardware. That's shocking. They want to sell you the product and they won't tell you how to use it. They say, here's a non-free program you can use. Run it and shut up. Don't bother us. <laughs> well, how do we find out how to run that hardware? With reverse engineering, you've got to study all those zeros and ones to figure out what they really do and write down how to use that hardware so someone else can write the free program to do it. It's hard work, but it can be done. If you want to make a big technical contribution, that's what you should do. Each new area, activity of life, can bring with it new human rights that are necessary. And the human rights depend on each other. If you lose one, it becomes harder to maintain the others. So nowadays, computing is so important in society that the freedoms of free software are among the human rights that society must establish and protect. Thus, how to help? Well, you can write free software. You can organize groups to campaign and persuade schools and governments to move to free software. You can help other people when they have trouble using free software or help them install it. You can. So we do. All right. So that's the end of RMS's talk. Are there any questions? How much non free software are you running, John B? Well, I was contemplating doing like an anti RMS and coming in like a tie and like going Windows 10 on us <laughs> and everything. Yeah, yeah, where? But uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't end up doing that. I am running the non free NVIDIA graphics, uh, which Linus has tried to fix. But <laughs> to know. Fuck you, you, NVIDIA! Um, yeah, I got, one better, hand. I got better power management. My battery doesn't die in like an hour and a half. <laughs> Solid. Uh, you have open source many, uh, biases? Free biases on your computers? B oh, viruses. Biases. Um, BIOS. Oh, BIOS. No, I do not. Um, a lot of the open source BIOS are for older models because I guess it takes a while for them to get reverse engineered. Microcode. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so like the X60, that was almost maybe 10 years ago, yeah. at least maybe eight, closer to eight. Yeah, and then the um, X200, I think they have yeah. as well, which was so 2010. So they're, they're not the biggest systems in the world. Google's actually been pretty good about um, contributing to core group for their Chromebook devices. So, it's the 
full Intel ones. The Atom ones were kind of problematic for reasons I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I have an, I have an Atom tablet um, with a touchscreen, and they purposely designed it so you couldn't put Linux on it. Which sounds impossible, but the um, it has a third, so it's a 64-bit processor, but it has a 32-bit um, EFI. So in all the Linux distributions that support EFI are 64-bit EFI. So if I grab a 32-bit ISO, it won't have EFI on it, and I can't boot. <laughs> Do you, some people have hacked their way around that, um, but it takes a bit of work, and you have to kind of rub across the platform and whatnot. Um, so like that's that's one way that the, the companies will try to get you. They yeah, they specifically design that chipset to not not be touched by. Don't forget the whole uh, security thing. Windows Phone. Yeah. Are they are they gonna like worsen that in the future? Or okay. it's like okay, because you can turn that off right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can it's for some models. For most. Yeah. yeah. For I mean, like the Core right. M stuff, it's not required. And if it's an add up, but there's nothing. There's nothing R, stopping. They explicitly say no, you can't turn it off. Yeah. There's it's nothing it's stopping it's Microsoft it's from saying in future releases it has to always be. With no option to see. Yeah, they didn't specifically say in Windows 10 that it has to be disabled. Um,